That was interesting. I'm going to give everybody a chance to find me again. Um, I hope we can fi figure out how to stop the other one. Let's see. It is a tricky mess. So sorry. Hello, everybody. Okay, let me see if I can go in and figure out how to stop the other one. Okay? Oh, geez. Okay, hold on one second, guys. I'm trying, yep, okay. I'm getting rid of today's first video so that you will know to come to the second video. All right, I'm hoping I did it right. We will see, but I think I got it. So let me come to this. Okay, here I am. Cheryl, you found me. Great job. You were the first one to find me. I was worried. I thought, uh-oh. But it was weird. It came up in an odd form. But you know what? I don't worry so much because I love watching Alex Anderson and her and John have problems doing those too. Hello, everybody. I'm so sorry. It came up in a... It wanted to, to do a program that I don't use, and I have no idea how that happened. I always just go, it's Gremlins. So Cheryl, Polly, and Sonia have found me. Linda McCollum found, yay. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad we could get together because I've got some fun stuff to show you today. Pat is here. I hope Miss Susan can find us. I hate when that happens because, and I understand now watching, and, and you know, when I say Alex Anderson has those problems, she does a whole lot more sophisticated show than I do, and uh, but she even has problems. So, uh, you know, it ha there she is. Oh, good. And Mark is on upstairs making sure you found me. And I found I had to try to figure out how can I delete the other one. Because as long as the other one stays open, people won't know I'm here. So hello, Susan found this Laura, Nikki, Teresa Louise. Nice to see you, sweetie. Boy, it is so good to see all of you. You don't know how much I look forward to seeing you twice a week. You know, it just, it makes my week. So I love it. But today, I look a little tired. It's allergies. I don't know about you guys, but I'm hoping Polly will get here and tell you. I mean, we have that thick choking, mostly from oak trees, green pollen, green, yellow pollen, and, and it's coating everything. So it is a mess. Dolores is here. So Okay, how is everybody? Anything going on? I love the way Susan comes in. She is so funny. I think she needs to start a YouTube for her sense of humor because it's hilarious. It's hilarious. So she's a lot of fun. Polly, Polly, yes, you Polly does know the pollen is horrible. So I'm rubbing my eyes all of the time. This past week, this one swelled up on me. I was rubbing it during the middle of the night. I mean, you can't help that you rub it when you're sleeping. <laughs> you think the heat's gotten to me. So, but Susan is funny. Hi, Miss. Oh, Nikki's here. Nikki's here. So anyway, I've been having fun. I've been having fun. And it's because this new 
garden gate quilt is a lot of fun. And I want to start with this because if you have a copy of this, I've sent out more copies of this pattern than any of the others. And, but if you want this pattern, it's completely free. I will email it to you. You can download it or print it. And this is just the basic. Then we're going to have fun making machine applique flowers to go on it. And they're going to be super easy. You'll have a lot of fun. But this is the just, this is just the background. And we're going to make it in the stained glass style. Now, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But when I show you how easy it is to do, I think you'll want to. So here is the pattern, and I've numbered each section because I want it to be so simple for you. So I've got that. You'll get all of this. Let me show you some other things you'll get. Um, then in the pattern, I have put some research in. So you can kind of get an eye. I found this after, after I think it was Linda said, make a garden gate. And then I included some visual research just for you to kind of get an idea. Then I made a pattern of Rudbeckia, which are yellow with a dark brown and purple cone flower. And I'm going to add both of these flowers because... As you know, that even though the cone flowers are a little bit more pink than purple, but purple and yellow are complementary colors. So they love being together. So you get a, a sheet of this, and I will be teaching you how to turn that into a flower. Hopefully, everybody got one of these. It's a coloring sheet, so you can decide how you want where and how you want your colors. Now, I don't know if Jody's here, but she asked me which color for her gate. I think at least the medium. I think the medium would show up really well. But you know what? Color it in and see what you think. I haven't had a chance yet to answer all my emails. I've been so tickled that so many patterns have gone out. And then for the individual sections, you'll get pages like this that tells you exactly how big to make every section. And one thing I did, because I told you, I said, the angle, I want that picket angles, the gate picket angles to be relatively uniform. They don't have to be perfect because this is supposed to be a garden gate that's probably been sitting out there for a long time. But what I did, because 66 degrees, I don't know 66 degrees from all in the ground. So I made a little template of what I thought this looked good. Yes, I did make it in EQ8. I sure did. And so this, I made a paper template. So what I do when I have a piece to cut, I lay, I measure out the length that the pattern thing, the absolute longest length that the pattern it requires. And then I figure out how to put this on so I get that angle on one part and the same angle on the upper part. Now, I will say, <laughs> uh, twice I cut it wrong. So hopefully I can use these on the other side of the fence because I cut it so that the wrong side of the fabric would be the right way for the angle. So, but if not, <laughs> It's two little pieces of fabric I'm not going to worry about. But anyway, I can't wait to show you what I've been working on because it's fun. This is easy. Remember when I told you I wanted this to be like you're sitting there and you're cutting out construction paper and you're gluing it. And I said, just don't eat the glue. But you can take and put a little bit of glue on your hands and peel it off. Mark told me he was really good at that that he would put thin layers, let it dry, put another thin layer, let it dry. Another. He said it was really neat. It would like pull off like a piece of vinyl. <laughs> so he excelled in that in school. <laughs> but uh, nobody we talked to eats glue, so that's good. <laughs> but anyway, another thing I found, 
is I had a bag of fusible tape. And hi, Betty! And I know that I said you can use good old, you can use good old tacky glue if you'd like. But I found that fusible tape that I've been carrying around for 15, 20 years. I'm using that stuff and it is making it really easy. But if you don't have any of it and you don't feel like cutting thin little strips of fusible, just use the glue. It all works. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> Y'all are so cute. Okay, let me see. Cheryl found us. Yay, I'm so sorry, guys. Cheryl, it, it came up in a program that I don't even use. And I, Mark said, well, you must have, you know, done your preview. And I said, I just pushed save, you know, new stream. I didn't do anything funky. Oh, really quick before I get, I'm, I'm so excited about this garden gate. So I want to show you something. I saw these beads on, I think it was Joanne's, web, Joanne Fabric website. Well, guess what? They're Bargello. And they're so cute. And we just got through doing Bargello. So I ordered them and got them in this week. But then the beads I had picked out didn't quite look right. So I, of course, I had to go, I went to Michael's online and ordered these little beads. These, the, the two color blues were just in a multiple color strand. And these are supposed to be like little, like marble type looking beads. But, and I went ahead and made this. And I love this nexus, necklace. This necklace says to me, I'm a quilter. And I love having a necklace that lets you know just what I love to do best. And then I made a couple bracelets to match. But I wanted to show you how similar. Remember, I finished my Bargello last week. But look at how similar the necklace and the colors I chose for Bargello. So, of course, when I saw the beads, I had to get it. So, anyway, isn't that cute? Oh, I love blue. I just wish my face wasn't so puffy. These allergies are tearing me up. <laughs> and I take Claritin. I did find, I, I think uh, my daughter said I could take two a day during the worst if I have to. I'm going to have to do something because I look like, you know, look like I've been left out in the rain. So, here, let's get to this quilt because this is, right now, is my pride and joy. I'm having so much fun. All right. Here is, you can get Steamacin 2 tape. This is half inch, but what I've been using up till now is the quarter inch. And I wish I could reach out and share with you because I have quite a bit of it. And... Uh, I'm finding it since it's older, the paper doesn't want to peel off quite as good. But this is what I do to the pieces. So I cut them, then I put the tape down each side, and then I peel the paper off like this, making sure that the adhesive stays on the fabric which I don't think it did here. It, it is a little bit tricky because it is older. But, um, but you just make sure the adhesive stays on the fabric and peel it off. And then you lay it down and iron it. Now, there's an important couple things to tell you. Since we're doing this stained glass style, do not use the full width unless you cut a bigger background because to get it the size 28 by 35 you have to be able to have room for the background to show through this is the easiest way to do stained glass and so what I did this was inch and a half I came in cut off a quarter of an inch and now you'll see it's one and a quarter, this one maybe just a touch over, but one and a quarter. 
So you want your narrow strips. Just take your two measurements and make them. This was two and a half. I made it two and a quarter. Okay. So I just want it. It was still easier to cut them out at one and a half and two and a half. Then I just trimmed off a quarter of an inch. But if you haven't cut your angle yet, it's real easy just to trim it a quarter of an inch off of the long side. Then, of course, when you do the length measurement, you need to leave the black, the black show through as if it's the stained glass caning. You have to let that show through. So the ends have to be trimmed just a little. But I'm, I'm wanting about a little over an eighth of an inch to show through for the stained glass. So let me move these things a little bit. These are all my strips. I have them ready. A couple hints. Uh, start your fabric. And here is the backing. And what I did is I starched it really good. Oh, I forgot I had a ruler under here. I starched it really good, and then I put my, I put um, fusible interfacing on to give it some weight. Then I got this out that I hardly ever use because I said you've got to keep the background clean because you don't want to put a piece down and adhere it with the adhesive and have thread under it, giving it a little lump or bump. So you see that? I just run the sticky thing over it. And hello, hello, who else? There's, there's Jody. Hi, sweetheart. Okay, so now we've got this. And let me, oh, that's right. I'm supposed to pull this over. Let me grab this. And I used a variety. I'm not normally a scrappy person. This time, I'm doing it scrappy, and I just love the way it looked. And if you think about it, you think about stained glass and all the different types of glass. But let me lift it up and show you. Do you see how there's about an eighth of an inch? Now, some of these, when I went to lay them down, you've got to measure it. You've got to keep a ruler right by you. Because you want these rows to be straight. If they start getting off, then it's going to get worse and worse and worse as it goes across. So right now, between the, ed the outside edge of one narrow to the outside of the next narrow is five inches. Okay? And like I said, you can use glue. But I found that using that steam -a seam I'm not sure if this is a different brand, but using that fusible in the tiny little tapes are saving me a ton of time. Then here you see, by cutting the angle, because I don't know, you know, I don't know 66 degrees. So I just picked an, an angle that I thought looked pretty. And I drew it out and then cut it out. And when I cut the fabrics now, I lay this on here. I've been using my marker, or you can use a marking pencil or Taylor's chalk. And I draw it. And in fact, it's kind of rubbed off, but I want to show you something. Now, I've got one, two, three, four. That's all of the pickets that are going up this way. Now, I'm going to be starting to come down. But one thing I did to make life very easy for myself is I drew some registration points right here. And here, you can't see, but there is, there is mark, chalk marks on, on these that will carry me off. Then I took and put the ruler on my angled tops of the gate pickets and... I made, well, boy, it doesn't show up there, but I made a line there, okay? These lines help keep me in place. Now, if you want to, you could put a line every few inches. I kind of like eyeballing it. That's my preference. 
Hello, Sandra, how are you? Oh, wonder, and if you want, anybody wants one of these patterns, um, Susan, could you tell them to send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com? I have sent out between 16 and 18 of these patterns, and I'm loving it. So what I do is I email it to you so you'll have it immediately. And I will make sure to check right after this show. And hopefully all of the rest of you, I hope you got your, whoops, and where did I just, I set stuff down and forget. Yes, here we go. I hope the rest of you who already had patterns got the coloring sheet, the flowers, so you would have know how to do your flowers, and the research. I hope all of you got that. But I, anybody who wants this pattern, I will email it out to you right away for free so you can start working right away. I kept my tape handy with my, I put notes on it, and then that way I can mark whatever piece I'm cutting. But I find just working right here on my ironing board and having my ruler and my marker, my scissors, having everything, and then keeping this little sticky roller handy to try to keep this fabric clean while I'm working on it so I don't end up getting anything in between. Oh, I know what I was going to show you. And some of the pieces, let me pull this over. It ended up getting, it was not, it was not uniform enough. And to get it to line right here, I don't like the way this looks on here. Let me see if I can lift it up. See how right here, it's not very even. Well, the good news is I put the Steema Seam 2 tape just inside. Well, that one I did right at the edge. But I put it, when I put the tape on, okay, here's the fabric and here's the back side. I put the tape, let me do it right under here for you. I put the tape about an eighth of an inch in, okay? By putting the tape an eighth of an inch in from the edge, then that way I can come and grab the fabric wherever I need it to open up more, like right here. I'll just put the scissors here right under that edge, because that edge is still free. And I'll come along like this and just nip off that little bit of an edge. And then I get a much better. And you can make it as perfect as you want or not. And, but I can make it better. And so that anywhere to try it, you have to first keep everything lined up. And if the fabric, if it needs a little trimming, you can do that if you leave the glue away from the edge. And I didn't want you to put glue or anything right at the edge anyway, because that makes it too hard to stitch it down. And this is going to be raw applique. I did not feel like turning under all these edges because this is my fun project. But so now you can see I have a better, I have um, the stained glass part showing through better. But do you see how easy this is to do? Hi, Miss Michelle. Hi. So, so now what I'm going to do is let me get a longer ruler. Okay, now I have a longer ruler. What I'm going to do, I'm learning all of these things as I go. And I've been making a video, but it needs to be edited once I shoot it. So I thought, well, at least for some of y'all who are anxious like me, anxious to get started, let's show you what I'm going to show you in the video. So that you can go ahead and get started. So here, this is my line, whoops. <laughs> it really helps to 
it really, really helps to have the thing leaning against the ruler here. Anyway, let me rub it off here. It's what I love about chalk. Anything you, any boo-boo can be undone. All right, push it against the ruler this time. There we go. So now I know that the first row of the picket stop right here. These sky pieces I'll tell you about in a moment. I'm letting those run, letting those run free. So now my end picket is going to come about this far from the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is come up here. I've gotten, this is the highest that I'm going with. Whoops. This is the highest that I'm going with the picket here. Okay, because I've come up here. So I'm going to put this at that point in the middle. Then I'm going to put the ruler even with this mark here. And go ahead and do a line there. Okay? That way I have those registration points to make this a wee bit easier. And that way... Because I was trying to measure them before and all that. That way, if you have a piece of fabric like this, okay, this is going to be that next picket. Then all I have to do is where is, oh, here's my piece of paper. And see, I can turn it based on whether it's going up or I can, I can turn this over depending on which way those pickets are going. Well, now they're going to start going back down. So I put this right up on the line, like here, like this, right on the line. And then I come along, whoops, like this. I come and make this and draw that line using that paper template. And then I come along and cut this. Okay, and this now I've got it the right size. Okay, then I let me make sure my iron's heated. But I'm having such fun doing this. I'm having such fun. I hated to even stop and talk to y'all. Isn't that rude? <laughs> but this is so easy. I haven't done this easy of a quilt in as long as I can remember. So please send me an email and say, yes, I want the pattern because it's fun. And I think when we're done, it's going to be really pretty. So I'm putting a little piece of the tape across here. Now I come and I press the stuff on the tape. Oh, I'm so sorry. You, uh, Angela Adele had rotator cuff surgery. I hope you feel better. Um, the applique, the edges, will there be enough of the black showing up? Okay, what I've decided to do, because I don't know if y'all saw, on man sewing, he, I thought, I, I don't know how, but I thought, oh, I'm going to just use the background as, you know, the stained glass coming through. And he did one like this three years ago, and it was a grapes pattern, and really a beautiful one. But, oh, my gosh, all of those um, cuts that he had to make around the grapes, I thought that looks like too much work to me. Let me make sure. I'm not sure I got the – hold on. I'm not real sure I got the sticky on there. I'm going to do this again. Sometimes in my excitement, I don't hold the iron on there long enough. I want to hurry up and get it done. <coughs> okay, so – um, on the, when we do the flowers, let me go back and find the flowers. This is what I've decided to do. Instead of trying to cut, because we don't know where we're going to want to put the flowers. At least I don't yet. I've now decided I'm going to make a vine grow up the gate. So I've got a lot of things to decide. But what I'm going to do is when I cut out these pieces, I'm going to put black fabric underneath of them. So let me show you what I mean. All right. 
So let's say I'm going to have a petal. I've got all my fabric. See all my fabrics that I'm going to use for this whole project out and sitting here. Let's say I'm going to cut a piece from this. Now I'm just cutting it, but you can use this as a pattern. Use a light box or hold it up to your window. And okay. So here is going to be a petal of the flower. And I drew you a lot of flowers so you could have them all look a little different. Let me make sure I've got this ironed really well. Then you're going to take this petal. You're going to put it on the black fabric. Okay, I think that's good. Let me just... All right, because, you know, I, I especially I ended up with some of this black. But let me show you something real quick. It's going to... To me, this is easy, okay? So, oh, good job. Good, hi, Sue Smith. Okay, now you see how you have it laying? And what I would do to make it even easier, well, no, I would do the glue because I was gonna say I'd have to try to take the paper off. You can either use fusible or just use a little bit of glue like this on the, whoops, I'm not showing y'all. Put a little bit of glue on the back of the petal, lay it on the black fabric like that. All right. And then when you're sitting watching TV in the evening, just cut it out with a little rim of black around the edge. Okay. This, I decided I wanted to go for ease and fun. I'm not going for some kind of virtual reality or whatever. So then you'll take that flower petal. Wait, okay. You take the flower petal and you lay it. Let me move this closer. You lay it here. See the flower petal? I'm going to turn off that light. That light might be giving us trouble. Let me see. Okay. So here are the fence posts. You've got your flower petal laid on black. Trim it around closely. Then you can lay that right there. And it still looks like stained glass. And then we haven't had to do all kinds of odd cutting around the basics. You're just going to lay the applique on top. And it will look like. Now, the only thing is usually there's a line that goes to it. Well, you know what? At the end of this, if we want to do, if we want to, we'll take a sharpie and draw the line, or we'll just take thread stitching and do a little a tight zigzag to make it look like the line. Do you know what I'm saying? In, in stained glass, you'd have to cut this to fit this in. So we'll work. We'll worry about that later. But this right here, that does a great job of mimicking the stained glass. But don't worry, we're going to do this every Thursday evening. We're going to take it slow like we did the mountain lake. Speak, I mean, mountain meadow. Speaking of the mountain meadow, I forgot to tell y'all, I am going to finish it. I just, this pattern took more time than I expected. All right. So now let's see if I can get this paper off the back of the tape. This is the only problem is, and I'm hoping it's just because it was old tape, but here we go, trying to get this paper off. And sometimes the paper will just kind of tear and you have to get it off in pieces. But if this, you know, it might end up be easier to be easier if I just used glue. But let me... Okay, while I'm trying to peel this stupid paper off, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, oh, yes, Susan's so busy because they're going to have their farm. I'm so excited. Oh, gosh, are you still, she's probably still pattern testing. That's a busy lady, let me tell you. Nikki, you're going to have to make your mama take it easy sometime. <laughs> Goodness. Hey, Ash. Ash. Mark must be outside and the dogs are going crazy. 
All right. Well, yesterday I had a burst of energy and we cleaned the house and I cleaned out the bird cages and I cleaned out the chickens and then I groomed two of the dogs. Um, Grammy looks really good. But I said, I wish I could have those bursts of energy on command. Do you ever notice that, that every once in a while you're just on a roll, you're just busy as you can be. And then like for the next week, it's hard to motivate yourself to even get up in the morning. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yay, yay, yay. All right, I'm going to let you see how easy this is now, finally. But, okay. And you'll have some threads, don't worry. You will be stitching this down when you're done. Oh, what happened, Laura? I'm so sorry. She never recovered and is in hospice. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Thank you for telling us, sweetie pie. Gosh. All right, see how I lay it with about an eighth of an inch here. Now, oh, good. Mark's going to go for a bike ride. I was hoping he would. All right, three and three quarters. So I'm measuring from the outside of this to the outside of that to make sure it stays even. Good. It's three and three quarters all the way down. So now I take the iron and I iron it. Now, if you want, you can use a dark gray for your caning, which is what that's called when they do stained glass. I decided since I wasn't going to have a very big, is Miss Bonnie here? If, since I wasn't going to have a very big space in the middle, then I wanted black because I really wanted it to show up. And that's one of the good reasons to use your coloring page and give it a shot. Now, on your coloring page, there's not a gap, but all you have to do is use a colored pencil or crayon and where the lines are where the lines are just color nice and dark on where the lines are and if it's gray you're going to try use gray if it's black use black so anyway but i'm excited about this so i'm now i'll just have to get one of my wider pieces like this and i can put this one well I have to recut the angle. I don't know if I have enough. Yeah, I do have enough. Okay, let me show you how I do this. Do y'all mind if I'm showing you this? Because I just want, when you start, I don't want you to have any, any trouble. All right. So this is the angle. I can feel, I can see it. See right here? I place this. And if you want, Fold your fabric back like that with a little bit of the black showing through. Okay, hold on. Fold it back like this with enough of the black showing through. Make sure it's just what you want like that. All right, now I have that fold line. Then I'll put the paper right up to the fold line. Then take my marker and color the fold line. All right. So now when I pick it up, I trim on that yellow chalk line. All right. Now one thing you have to be careful, and I should use longer scissors. By using the short ones, I get too many spaces where I start and stop the scissors. And every time you start and stop them, it can leave a little bit of a bump. But if you've ever looked at stained glass, it is not perfectly smooth because they use a they use a caning on it and then they have to solder over it. So the solder kind of leaves a mark. Now I'm noticing this is a little wider than I need it up at the top. So I'm going to very carefully I go, I trim little bits at a time because you can't put it back on, but you can always take off a little bit more. I, if I don't like the threads, I'm going to trim them off and I can use fray check. Okay, let's see. It's a little bit, it's 
a little bit big at the bottom compared to the top. So I'm going to come up here and take just a touch more off. All right. Now let's see how that looks. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. That is good. All right. So what I'm, and it's the right length. So you notice that? Okay. So now I'm going to use glue. Okay. Let's say you're using glue and just dot it. Don't put it on thick and don't go right to the edge. Stay in about a quarter to an eighth of an inch in. Okay. Whoops. Hold on. All right. Then I'm going to take and lay it in place very carefully. Okay. And you see I've left room here, left room all around for the black to show through. And I might decide that I want a little more. Okay, if you use a satin stitch, would it turn out like stained glass? Actually, you could, and that way you'd have a little bit of a hump like you do on stained glass. You can also buy a spool of that bias tape that's a quarter of an inch that you could just have the fabrics all butt up against each other, and there it's fusible, and you just put over it. But I'm too cheap to spend $12 on at least one roll of the stained glass tape. And if you did a satin stitch, it would actually give you that, that humped up little edge. But honest to God, I'd rather have my teeth pulled out than to do all satin stitch every edge. But it's up to you. If you like doing it, you go for it. But anyway, let me now hold it up so you can see. Oh, I was going to tell you, this is the sky. Instead of having a seam here, I just ran the pieces long. Now, if it looks weird, then I'll come along and make a seam. But I thought I just added up the upper length with the lower length, and hopefully it's the right length. I just was in a hurry to get it done. So let me... And this is, this is a good, it's a good time to hold it up and look at it because, yep, yeah, I can see that in some of these rows, I'm going to have to trim it open a little bit more. It looks like I started with a better width on the first one, okay? But you're getting that idea of the stained glass look and see where having a fabric with some subtle, subtle shapes gives you the feeling of stained glass. All right. So that is that. Now when it comes when it comes to these rows right there, just remember to take and cut off an eighth on each side. Okay? An eighth of an inch on each side of the blue pieces and the yellow pieces. Because I don't know if you remember, but what I did is I gave you um, templates for those, because I knew those would be trickier. Let me find it for you. But I gave you templates for those. And just remember to trim an eighth of an inch on each side of both the blue and the yellow. And that way it will, here they are. It will give you, okay. See how, this is the actual size that you need. And this is seam allowance. Trim off and half of that seam allowance. And then it should fit right. If it doesn't, then trim off the whole seam allowance. But I, I haven't gotten to that yet. Thursday night, I will be doing that. I'll show you that. So, unless I can get this video done, and then I will show you, because I don't like you going in and doing stuff. It's like, you know, unless you feel comfortable, just wait until I show you with a, either a video or Thursday night. All right. So, that was fun. And now you can see, it's like, oh, man, do I have to do anything else? I just want to play with this, because that's my style. And you know what I'm going to do? Where some areas it's not quite enough of the stained glass look, 
I'm going to go up tonight when I'm watching TV with Mark. And since I didn't glue down right to the edge, I can easily trim it just so it looks just right. But I love all the different blues. I think it really makes it look pretty. And you can tell. In fact, Jody, your fabrics are beautiful. And so you can really tell that using a wide variety of fabrics makes it look more like stained glass. But I've got so much because I've got the yellows for my Rudbeckia and the sun. And I've got a huge variety of pinks and browns for the tops. Oh, you know what I just realized I forgot? The oranges for the tops of the purple cone flower. And then I have tons of greens because you need greens for the stems. You need it for the grass on the bottom of the gate. And you need it for the leaves of the flowers. So, but anyway. All right. Well, that's good for that. Are there any more questions? And if you, yes, you could use a quarter inch ruler. I'm worried that a quarter of an inch of the black showing through is a little bit too much. That's why I say eight on each piece. And that way you don't have certain pieces too big for the other and cut. You know, let me show you. Because I realized this after I designed it, I said, I have to have space for the black to show through. So if you want to, if you haven't cut your fabric yet, cut the thin ones one and a quarter and cut the uh, thicker ones two and a quarter. And then you don't have to trim them. If you've already cut your fabric, then you have to go trim them an eighth of an inch on each side. Or if you haven't, like let's say a piece like this is just straight. Just cut a quarter of an inch off one side. You're good. If it's a piece that you've already cut the point in, you have to do an eighth of an inch on each side. And don't forget about the little bit in here. If you don't want to do the trimming and you've already cut your pieces, you just have to make a bigger background because it's going to be bigger. I sat there and said 17 pattern pieces times a quarter of an inch. Oh, that's almost eight inches. <laughs> so it would be a bigger pattern. All right. Or do like someone said and do satin stitch in the in between or get that tape. If you go look at man quilting, it's 2018. He did a grape version of a stained glass. It's gorgeous. And that and he'll give you some. In fact, he has another one. The grape one did not use this method, didn't add um, the tape to it. But he has another one where he used that fusible black bias tape and laid it on. So, all right. Also, when we're done gluing this all down, before we put the flowers on, we're going to take and stitch it, a plain stitch around the edge. This is raw. Unless you want to flip it under, then you wouldn't have to trim anything. But I was not going to get into that because... Lately, I want to get it done. <laughs> I want to have fun and get it done and move on. But we're just going to take and just sew a straight stitch right around the every edge to make sure the fusible holds or the glue. And um, I thought, oh, gee, I don't want to have to switch colors of thread because there's going to be blue and off white and yellow and green and brown. I'm not going to switch threads. And then I realized that gray thread will blend right in. Let me show you, bring you back down here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love Robapel. But look at it just blends in. And actually, this one is better than this one. So, but I'm just going to put gray thread. I'm going to put black thread in the bobbin, in the bottom. And then gray thread for the top. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in and stitch really close to the edge. All the way around each of these pieces. Okay. But if you look at that, you will not. You can hardly see that gray thread. Isn't that cool? So this is a good medium gray. I'll show you. You can get light gray 
or this is even lighter. I have lots of grays, but what you want is that good medium gray. And, uh, and then that way you don't have to be changing your threads all the time. Cause I hate that. That'll drive me nuts. As you can tell, I'm a little impatient and you can even, let me see how it does on the white. That is wonderful. That doesn't show enough to even worry, to even think about. See that? Oh, thanks, sweetie. Okay, now, um, so that's good for the gate. Now, some of you are hoping to do a mosaic, which is a little bit differently. It's still, mosaic is still the art of taking glass pieces, gluing them down to a surface, and then taking a mortar type mix and grout mix and filling in around the glass pieces. So we, I am in the process of designing a view of looking down at a koi pond with two koi fish that kind of make a loose circle and I'm making a pattern for that. And as soon as I get that, get that pattern made, I'm going to send that out to anybody who wants it. And I'm going to try to keep it reasonably small. Sometimes I, I just make projects too big. I don't have time for that. I don't know if you do, but if you can always. <laughs> Koi fish, yin and yang, yep. And, uh, but if you want to make it bigger, you know how to do the folding of the paper and, and enlarging. And I will clap and, and applaud for you very much. So, all right. And like I said, feel free to keep the tape around so when you're cutting your pieces, you can label them. You don't want to get anything confused. All right. That was fun for today. Now, I bought some things and I wanted to talk to you because do you see the two quilts back there? You see both of those quilts? They are, whoops, let me move this way. There's a light version and a dark version of the Binding Tool Star quilt. Okay, you see those two colors? And when I show you photos today, I even have a third color scheme. I've made three of them. Only one of them is totally finished. But I had mentioned that I wrote up my own pattern and directions. And if you want, if any, anyone who wants to, we can do a sew along where I teach you how to make this easy and gorgeous quilt. So, yep, we've got the jewel tones on black and the pastel on white. And then, um, but you can choose whatever color background. It is very friendly for two and a half inch strips. I mean, very friendly. So, yes, good, okay. I thought we had a lot of people. So let me work on that this week and then next week. Hold on just one second. Let me find the binding tool if I've got it handy. Hold on. Let me see. Where is that binding tool? Here it is. All right. All righty dighty. I tell you what I'm even going to do. Some of you might not have a binding tool template. So I will include a piece of paper with an accurately drawn shape like this. So if you don't have the template, you can make your own out of cardboard and you'll do fine. I'm looking to put something behind this so I can, well, let me see if this will work. This is a wonderful tool. They run about eight to $10. And it was made, it was invented to help you teach you, help teach you how to do binding because it has the right angle. Well, then some smart person, the first place I saw it was on Missouri Star Quilting. They, whoops, let me, hold on a second. What happens to clear here? Let me hold this up so you can see this. But what 
some smart person said, oh, that's a cool shape. And you could use that ruler. See, it teaches you on the tool, teaches you how to do the binding. But the binding tool by Tom Products, the Quilters Mercantile Incorporated 2009, made in the USA. Whoops, my arms are getting tired, so they're shaking. Okay. T, is it T Q M P R O products? Okay. T, is it T Q M products? Dot com, but you can find these anywhere. And in fact, the only thing I've ever used it for is to make the binding to a quilt. But you, this is what you use: you lay it on the strip, and you cut, and you cut, and you have you have you have to do mirror imaging. So you cut some like this, you cut the others like that. Boom. So I'm going to give you some time to figure out what fabrics you want. One jelly roll will do the quilt. Um, figure out you're going to need your, I think it's, I'll, I'll give you all the instructions, whether it's two or three yards for the background, I, I have to look it up. But I will start sending you out the directions. Just send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com. In the meantime, yes, there you go. You, in the meantime, go to the Missouri Star Quilt online YouTube and look up her Binding Tool Star. The first time I saw it, it blew my mind. I came home and in two weeks had the entire quilt made and quilted. Then I taught a class with it because everybody said, oh, I love that quilt. I had 30 students in my class, biggest class I've ever taught. So, please send me, and, you know, we can figure out how, if you want to do gypsies to work on it, or just do Sundays and work on it, but it's fun, and it's easy, and, I mean, dramatic. So, let me move this out of the way. So, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, and I, when we show, when we do our show and tell in just a few minutes, I will show you my first one I made. My daughter has it now. And it's just, and it leaves nice spaces for quilting. So, and you can use any color background you want. Any color at all. That's one thing I love now is that people are brave enough to use teal backgrounds or lavender backgrounds, whatever you want. The size of the finished quilt. It's a throw size, large throw size. I would say it's probably like 68 by 68. It's a square. And, um, but when I send you the information, you'll have it all. Okay. In a month or so, I'm going to go see my grandsons. And Russell fell in love with a book that I sent him for Christmas called Pout Pout Fish. And here is some ABC fabric within the design of the writer and illustrator of the Pout Pout Fish book. And I got him a soft, fuzzy Pout Pout Fish. And, oh, look at Laura. How did you know that? That's fantastic. Look at y'all. Now, see? Y'all have some gumption, let me tell you. I love it. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. And some of the neat things is I'll go, I'll go over different ways you can put a border on your binding tool star. I did the first one with piano keys. This one I did, I'm doing applique, and I haven't decided on that one. I may try to do a braided border. So I like I don't like doing the same thing twice, you know? <laughs> but anyway, look at this cute panel that I got from my grandson. And so what I'm going to do is make him a little nap blanket. 
So when he takes his little nap, so when he gets tired, it's going to be just small enough for him to carry around. I'm going to take the alphabet fabric, just do a little border around it, put a backing on it, do simple quilting, and then take him his own little pout pout blanket. Because when I'm going to see him, I want to take him something. And uh, so, got that in today. I was real pleased. I ordered that. Oh, I know where I can tell you where I got it. Because it was kind of hard to find. Most places have sold out of it because it was popular in 2018. From Thread Bear Fabrics. Thread Bear Fabrics. Okay. And uh, very, very good shipping. Very fast. Very happy. All right. Then, okay. And we'll talk some more about the binding tool in a bit. There was a sale at Pineapple Fabrics. And I've been very good about not buying fabrics. And... It really helps when you can't go out to go shopping. And, uh, all right. Uh, I got my pineapple fabrics card. I love these things. I don't want to throw them away. So I end up with all of these postcards. So this came from pineapple fabrics. And I, Mark could open the box, but I'm just now taking them out of the package for the first time. They had a sale, one of those Make It Mine sales on greens. Well, I'm always using greens because of all the landscapes that I make. So I saw some wonderful greens, wonderful greens. And all of this fabric was between $4.89, $4.99, and there might have been one that was $6.99. So, and look at this. Now, I don't know if you all remember but I had a gift certificate and I got some French general fabric. I thought this would be so pretty with the French general fabric. So, got those. And I told Mark, I said, Mark, they've got some good fabric and it's a great clearance sale. Today, oh man, they had a great make it mine, a whole bunch of them. But the one I wanted was sold out, which happens. I don't wake up early enough to get the good sales. But isn't this pretty? I love this. And uh, in fact, I'll show you when I show you photos. I hope I saved it. Mark didn't go for a very long bike ride. But this Reykjavik um, Lava Flow is fascinating mark and i and i think it would make a wonderful quilt and it'll go with my space earth theme that i'm trying to do but in this pretty and to to do ponds and even skies that could even be sky fabric and then i got this because i don't normally buy pink this is called azalea and i don't normally buy pink this is a good pink. In fact, I can use it with our garden gate. Then greens, because I'm always looking for greens. Look at this one. Isn't that wonderful? There must be two yards of this one in there. And look at this. And this. So I'm always using greens. Always, always. Oh, pretty. I love the way they pack it. Yeah, so nice and neat and tidy. Oh, look at this. I forgot I got a light pink. Because I don't have light pink. That's, that's wonderful. I can probably use this for highlight petal on my garden quilt. You know, I might use some of these on the garden quilt everywhere. Look at this. Isn't that great? And here, dark teal. You know, I love dark teal. And, oh, this is gorgeous. I wish Bonnie were here. This is some of that 
what is that fabric that she loves so much? Stonehenge. This, yep, this is a Stonehenge. And of course, you know, blue is my signature color. So, and a, another Stonehenge with stars. I didn't know the stars were going to be that close together, but I think I'll make good use of it. All right, so that's the fabric I bought. And every bit was clearance price. So that makes me feel good because you know how cheap I am. And I love, I love their fabrics. Love, love, love their fabrics. This one, that would be great in doing that um, Recky Vic lava flow. So there we go. And I've been so good, I haven't even bought that um, that pansy fabric. I said, Deb, I'm sure you have some violet fabric from years ago you never even finished. So I've been good. But anyway, all right. I love getting these bags. Thank you very much because, you know, I, I keep all those Ziploc bags. But, and I think this will look so pretty with the French General. It kind of reminds me of a, a toil fabric, which is, you know, like drawing of landscape or something. So that's my big, my big shopping spree of lately. And I've been really, really good. So let me see. I wanted to show some of you that are working on the Mountain Meadow quilt. Look what I found in Quilting Arts magazine. This is this spring's magazine. And the woman's name is Anna or Anna Sumner. And oh my gosh, she is so talented. But this is the kind of stuff that I want to add to my Mountain Meadow quilt. And that's with the silk ribbons. Isn't that just gorgeous? So kind of keep that in mind if you're working on the Mountain Meadow. And, um, oh, look at this one. In fact, you know what? I hope B Hepworth sees this because she will love it. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? And look at the purple cone flowers, ladies. Isn't that beautiful? So that's a very, very talented woman. Anna Sumner. Beautiful. All right. Now let me think. What else was I going to talk about? I thought about getting out some of my floppies, my unfinished objects. They're hanging in the um, closet. They're, the tops are finished, but I haven't quilted them. I opened the closet and said, nope. I just can't deal with it today and close the closet back. <laughs> so sorry about that. But anyway, okay. I think that's all the new stuff I was going to talk about. So, um, uh, gosh, Susan, you are amazing, Susan. I, I y'all always remember to thank Susan because she does so much to make this show enjoyable and i don't know what we would do without her let's go do show and tell and then i think we might get out of here just a little bit early so you can go raid your stash for binding tool or garden gate fabrics and or go like i'm going to and sit out on my swing and just relax and swing myself in fact come here come here grommy come here Come here, good boy. Come here. Come here. He said, you're going to pick me up. I know it. Come here. Come here. Let me show him how good you look. Come here. He, I spent two hours on him. He hates to be picked up. But here is Grommy. He was expertly groomed yesterday, weren't you? I say expert. I'm no expert. But for me, it was a good job. So there's my Grammy. 
Come here. Maisie. Come here. Come here. Maisie, I just started working on yesterday. And it's funny because her fur is kind of like a, a wool uh, off a sheep. So as I as I was trimming her, it would kind of roll up in little rolls or balls. So I just started working on her. There's a lot of fur. And then Blossom, good girl. Blossom's over there shivering. She's like, don't pick me up, Mama. So now let's do show and tell. All right. As you can tell, my dogs are happy not to be on camera. They, none of them signed up for this. <laughs> All right, let's get this. I can't wait to show your photos. We've got a new amazing photo from Miss Jody. I can't wait. Yeah, Cheryl, she does have a permanent perm. Okay, let's get those pictures. Hold on, guys. I can't wait to show you. Alexis, now I'm hoping, okay, I did get both. Okay, I wasn't sure. Miss Alexis has been has started back up with her embroidery and I love her work. I just, I mean, she's so patient and meticulous. I would have a very hard time doing that work. And I'm so glad she loves it because I would just be overwhelmed. All right, next picture. Look, this one always makes you smile. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. And the little expressions on their faces. Too cute. All right. Let's see who else we have. Miss Betty outdid herself. I, oh my gosh. I can't talk and applaud, but if I could, I would give her a big applause. Let me back up. Just look at this amazing work she did. Isn't that gorgeous? And she has made her meadow flowers look just like what I want mine to look like. But I doubt I'll get them that pretty. That is just beautiful. And her stone wall with double gates. And look at the different thread painting that she did through the meadow. Her gorgeous lake that's reflecting the sky and the mountains above. Her mountains and the sewing. I'm just so proud of her. I am so, and she did, she put a swing on her tree. So everybody, yay for Miss Betty. That is amazing. And then one more shot of her gorgeous nighttime landscape. Is that just beautiful? Way, way to go, Miss Betty. Way to go. All right. Let's see who's next. Miss Bonnie, Miss Bonnie, oh, I love it. She's so smart. She put sweet little flowers in the, in the blocks at the foundation. How lovely. And I love the orange kitty who's come to visit. That is just, I know she enjoys to get out there and enjoy that front yard. So I'm, I'm really tickled for her. She's having a great retirement. All right, here is my, whoops, this is not the best one. Let's, wait a minute, no, I guess this one is, or is it? Trying to, uh, I think this one is, let's see. This is my first binding tool star that from beginning to end I made in two weeks. Now, I was working like crazy on it, but is that pretty or what? I just fell in love. I saw it. I watched the Missouri Star Quilt Company when they made it and said, that's my quilt. And these are just all kinds of miscellaneous fabrics that ended up playing really well together. And look at the space for quilting. So it can make you look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. So, and that was in it. In my case, that was it. Then in this one, I did a piano key border, but I turned the corner with the piano keys. And so I have, I still have that foundation pattern if you wanted to try that. But I love, this is a binding tool star in the scrappy look. I just love it. 
All right, let's see what, oh, got to show this off because within two weeks, it's going to be back to my normal house needing a lot of care. Luckily, the grass started coming out so pretty. We had pine straw put down. You can't see the weeds, so I was so tickled. I said, I got to show them because within a month, it won't look like that anymore. <laughs> so here is, here is the springtime yard. Doesn't everything look? So neat and tidy and full of promise, but it won't stay that way. I guarantee that. <laughs> so, and then, oh, this was Maisie out of, after her little partial. I just started trimming her good. And there is my grommet. He's like, why are you looking at me, mama? I had done his nails, his teeth, and his trim. He was done with me. This was our Easter dinner that we made last week and I even made us some rice crispy treats and see I put nuts in them so that makes them healthy right <laughs> and those rice crispy treats are all gone and uh, here is our dinner plate you can see on mine I tried to be good I put a lot of asparagus <laughs> but that was some good dinner here's my little Russell and his balanced bike my daughter went to see him um, over Easter, and oh, that's that quilt again. Then my daughter sent this. This is in honor of Nadine, who always shows her us her pretty, beautiful countryside. And this is my daughter went out for a walk, and this is the sky she got. I don't know what it's like to wake up that early, so I haven't. I've never done that. <laughs> And um, here is Russell and Donnie playing. And I'll be seeing them in a month. There's my little sweet Donnie. And then my daughter's house, I had to brag on her. She is all by herself. She came out and made all, this is the place, she, the house she rents. And she put landscape fabric down everywhere and turned these into flower beds and she's got a pot of herbs here and she's going to be planting a couple tomato plants and um, some nice summer flowers so I just I love what she's done I just think that looks so inviting and we love our pine straw let me tell you it can hide a multitude of sins this is my new grand puppy he's now about 13 weeks growing like a weed He's very smart and very sweet. And then my daughter, that daughter up in Maryland, Katie, she went into Philly to try to see who has the best steak subs. And I think it was Pat's. This is Gino's and across the other corner or something like that is Pat's. So they went to see both. Okay, let's see. Where was I? I guess that was it then. Um. Yeah, is that all? Yeah, I think that's all I had to show you with that one. So let's see who else now. Deborah Donnell, I'm so tickled to report she has started working again. And she's doing so well. And uh, still trying to take it a little easy. And this is, oh, what is she? Is this her the farmer's wife? She's gotten 22 of the 99 done. I think it's amazing. Way to go, Miss Deborah. And keep taking good care of yourself and getting better, sweetheart. I tell you what, recovering from surgery is not easy and it's not instant. And we're real tickled that Dolores' brother-in-law continues to recuperate from his terrible accident. And she's going to give him his choice of these two little quilts that are just gorgeous i just love look at this isn't that something i know that's going to make him feel better but she does the most beautiful work i love the lichens on the branch how awesome is that way to go all right i love seeing y'all's work i learned so much and i'm happy to report that yes diana wright does take a break because sometimes I we wonder if she even sleeps but they went out on their boat and 
I'm trying to think of what else. There, there is Mr. Marty again. Whoops. Well, I can't get that one to get bigger. And let me see. Got to show you Miss Diane. But in Texas, it's all nice and warm now. Whoa. And then I'm not sure when this was taken, but I assume this is her son. And he was out ice fishing. So that looks fun. That looks like a lot of fun. And then she got some happy mail and some goodies in the mail. It's so much fun when we order something and it comes in. How exciting is that? So way to go, Miss Diana. The only way people can work that hard is if you play hard too. And it's so nice to know that they do. Now, you know, Miss Jody is somebody who... I just cannot get enough of her artwork. She's so very talented. Well, oh, here is her Garden Gate collection. Love it, love it, love it. I think it's wonderful. And I was thinking somewhere in the mid-tones for her gates, but even the dark. I mean, she's picked out some wonderful fabric. Okay. Then look at her newest this is Alex, Alice in Wonderland. Is that incredible or what? And you can see Alice back here in shadow. And look, I mean, I'm just blown away. So I can't wait. I want to keep seeing her work. Her, she has a very strong artist voice and it comes out in her work. Just gorgeous. Way to go, Miss Jody. You're so talented. Okay, Kathleen. Oh, that's, I think this is Kathleen Champ, and she sent us this stained glass, which is beautiful. Look at this. A rose, daffodils, and a water lily. Isn't that just beautiful? Looking at hers makes me, yeah, I think I'm going to open up my lines a little bit wider. So I'll give that a trim because I do like, I like the way that you have a nice definite line there. I like that a lot. Way to go. Thank you, Kathleen, for showing us that. All right. Now, Linda, Linda, luckily she sent me some new ones. I left one of hers in because it's just such a beautiful landscape. I love seeing it. But then guess what? She sent me some more. Now let me make this big so you can see it. I was trying to edit it and it wouldn't let me. Oh my goodness, Linda, that is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. She is so talented. Okay, and then... This is another, I've shown you something similar to this before. It's really beautiful. And she does painting on paper, fabric. She does collage images, and they are beautiful. Each one is its own little work of art. Just beautiful. Okay, and then here is her last one. It's another acrylic. It's a mono print of hand cut birds from printed paper. Okay, let me bring this bigger. But I mean, this woman is such a talented artist and her vision, look at this. Isn't that just beautiful? And it's welcome spring. I would say so. That is just beautiful. So thank you, Miss Linda. And, you know, I love, thank you for sharing with me, everyone, because it really keeps us inspired and it keeps us wanting to create more. Let me spin this one around, okay, and then enlarge it. Okay, here. And, you know, I'm so tickled. This is Miss Nadine, who's developing her own artistic voice, I see. Her color choices are her signature. And look at her doing handwork. She was never going to want to do handwork, but boy, she's fooled us all. She's so talented. This one's sideways, but you can see the book she's working out of. I love, I think it says I love houses. And, but she's learning 
to do scenes like that. Now, then she got an order in, and these are Japanese-made items that are tiny, tiny, and they're glass-headed pins that came with it that have their own card where they're dressed like flowers. And, I, and you can't really see some of her items, but they're very, very tiny. And they're from Kahona or Kahana. And let's see the next one somewhere. Oh, here it is. Look at this. She's holding them, all these tools, the tiny miniature scissors, the pen cushion in a little dovetail join box. All all in the palm of her hand and one of those beautiful glass headed pens. And oh here we go. Here's the pens um wrapped like flowers. I mean that is just beautiful. I love it when companies take such pride in their work and when she takes such pride in her creations. So, way to go. And, oh, this one is really pretty. The fabric is gorgeous. Come on. And I don't know if the fabric came as part of a kit or she picked it out. But look at that. Isn't that lovely? It looks so translucent. Beautiful. All right. And then here is a close-up of her kitty. And I love this. And, you know, she has two or three kitties, so I know she loves her kitties. Miss Nadine loves life, and it shows. And I'm so tickled for her. And I think this is an editor sitar, but I can't say for, I'm pretty sure it is. It's a, like a welcome spring project, I believe. Just lovely. And here is a cute Happy Easter sign that is just precious. Doesn't that look like Nadine? When we think of Nadine, you can just, I love it when people, you can just tell what they're made of and what they're about by the things they love. Then I have a cute t-shirt that Miss Pat sent to our site. And that is just so cute, my retirement office. And trust me, if you're anything like me, you'll be busier once you retire than you were before. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Let me open this back up. That's an interesting look, though. All right, let's see who is next. We're down near the end. Here, Miss Polly, and she sent me something new today, too. This Look, she's working on paper piecing. I'm so tickled for her. Way to go. Look at that. Looks like it might end up being a New York beauty. I'm not sure. Way to go, Miss Polly. And then I love this quilt. I just think it just, it's so gorgeous on those walls. Really perfect. And I love how the rose red in that corresponds with that print. So that, that's just a nice look. All right. Let's see what else we have. We have something from Susan. Yes, I just thought this was so sweet. She put on the site. So I thought, well, we have to see it on Sunday, too. Way to go. Love that. And let's see what else. I think that one is it. So, I hope you enjoy our show and tell for today. I can't believe it's April 11th already. My goodness gracious. So, anyway. So, and I'm hoping you can still see me and I didn't cut you off when I switched back. But, um, I tell you what. Oh, there we go. Aw. Our, our, isn't it? Oh, there's Miss Bonnie. Our Miss Bonnie is here. Yay. And how smart were you to put those? I couldn't tell whether they were pansies or vinkas, but put
put them in the blocks is great. What a great idea. So I'm so glad you joined us today, guys. Good. Thank you. And I'm so excited about the garden gate. So don't forget, if you want that pattern, send me an email. Say, yep, you send it to me. I'll send it to you. Silk pen. Now you're even smarter than I thought you were. They won't fade or be eaten by the bunnies. So you are smart. What a smart lady. And um, But I hope I'll soon have a mosaic um, koi. How can you start on a smaller landscape? I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't be overwhelmed. Just take it one step at a time and don't worry. And I find sometimes if I have several things going at once, um, it helps me. I'll switch between depending on what mood I'm in. If you're only doing one at a time, if you lose interest in that one, then you do nothing. But if you have all these things going at once, you can always find something to work on. But I just wanted to show you again the binding tool star. And I will try to get you the get the patterns already this week and get them to you. And next week we'll start on that. Okay, that's fabulous. Yeah, and the reason I have you send me an email is because I often forget. And if I see your email, then I can just zip, 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 go and, and, you know, attach a file. Boom. You got it. So isn't this a wonderful group? So many very talented people. And as always, you make me feel wonderful. Make sure, think about getting your vaccination. Numbers are going back up. But, and I know in our state, 25% of us are done with ours. And I'm thrilled and mark and i will go back in nine days to have part two and uh, and then i can go see my grandbabies and i don't have to be afraid anymore number one i hope you always hope that you know it'll keep you safe and it will but number two i don't want to give it to anybody else but take good care of yourself because you all mean so much to me we need you there's only one of you and we need you just like you are so Um, actually, I'm doing absolutely wonderful taking them off the site. But if they're not comfortable putting on the site, then send them straight to me. But I finally learned how to take them off the site, which sure makes it easy. So that is wonderful. And let me see. Oh, you're allergic to the flu vaccine. Well, then you know what? It's more important that we all get the vaccine so we can keep you safe dear Sue. So, ah. Uh. Oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you. Working on seven lost her sanity about three months ago. <laughs> well, and that's how I ended up with 64 UFOs. <laughs> but I'm working on them still. I am working. I'm a good girl. I'm a very good girl. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, yeah, if if they say if we can get up to a certain level, a number of people who have the vaccines, it'll protect everybody. The main thing is these variants are running up the numbers, and we want to get those variants stopped. And the more people vaccinated, the quicker we can get those variants to stop. So, yes, do not forget your mask. I had a woman the other day, I went to the nursery, and I had my mask on, and she said, I'm a nurse, and those masks are just political. I'm like, really? Then how come when they do surgeries, they wear masks? There's got to, I mean, you know, come on, it makes sense. Keep the germs from spreading. So, yeah, please wear your mask. Just, just take care of everybody. Take care of each other. We love, we all love each other, and let's just be good to each other, okay? Take time for yourself this week. Do something special for you. And uh, enjoy your flowers. Silk or regular, because I think that's brilliant. And uh, enjoy what you're working on and send pictures because we, we need some more. We need some more show and tell. And that's fine if you only have it partially done. We love it all.
Okay, guys. I didn't ask her. I was so flabbergasted. And I was even helping her carry her plants to her car. And I thought, I should have said something. I kind of felt guilty. And I thought, no, I'm not going to argue with anybody. It's just not worth it. But, you know, just take care of yourselves. I, you don't know what it would mean if I heard that you had gotten ill or were in trouble with it. I want, I care. I'm invested in all of you. And I want you healthy and happy. Okay? Please remember that. I can't afford to lose a single one of y'all. I can't afford to lose a single one of y'all. All right. So this week I'm going to be putting a little bit of pine straw down. I'm going to do it in the back where the ground is level. And then uh, I planted a couple plants that I bought the other day. So I've started. Spring is coming. Oh, I forgot to take a picture. I made a new cover for my backyard swing and bought some new cushions. And so now I love to sit out there. I take Kiwi with me and we go sit out there and we talk to each other and we just swing. And sh now that the cover's on the swing, she's not so worried the hawk's going to come and eat her. So <laughs> these little birds, they don't call them bird brain for nothing. <laughs> Well, y'all take good care. Have a great week. I'll see some of you Thursday night for our garden gate. And I will be getting the mosaic quilt done. I'll see the rest of you next Sunday where we'll start on the binding tool start. And like I said, I will draw. What did I do with my binding tool? I will draw around the binding tool. And so all you have to do is transfer that onto cardboard. If you don't have a binding tool, and you don't, can't get one yet. And so save a cereal box or something like that. It's a perfect thickness. And when I send that to you, just draw it. And that way you'll have the shape. And it's nice and easy. Take good care. And thank you so much for coming today. And I will see you soon. So have a good day. And a great week. Bye-bye. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye, guys. You're the best.